In this group of videos, we are going to discuss the cash flow statement. Uh, so when I was beginning as an accountant and I was thinking of the cash flow statement, maybe you're thinking of it as well. Of course, the name is very self-explanatory, right? Cash flow statement. It's a financial statement that talks about where our cash is going to and where we like where we're spending our cash and where our cash is coming in from, how we are generating cash in our business. Uh, and so when I was first starting out uh, in accounting and just learning about it, I thought, well, we have a cash flow statement, of course, and that's the cash T account, right? I can sort of say, okay, the debits represent cash in, the credits represent cash out, and I end with a balance. You know, I have a beginning balance, and maybe I should change that to why I have an ending balance. And I have cash inflows on the left, and I have cash outflows on the right. And of course, this is true. Uh, this summarizes, or doesn't summarize, this lists all of the transactions through my cash account. And so I could theoretically look at this and know exactly where my money came from and went. So I would say to myself as a very novice accountant, well, why don't we just provide the cash T account? You know, you can see where all the money went. You can see where all the money came from. This should be sufficient. But I wasn't really a thinking accountant at that time. I was just a beginning student and I had done my share of accounting questions in an introductory accounting class. Uh, but when faced with reality, a real company's cash T account will not look like this. And why won't it look like this? Well, um, let's think of my university as an example. I work for a university called Thompson Rivers University. And that university, every day, they have hundreds, if not thousands, of tra cash transactions. So if you think, okay, 100 transactions would be 100 lines. And 100 lines printed on a page, that would be at least two pages. So if I did that 100 transactions, which is on the low end, 365 days a year, and we're just listing them down, you know, one per line, uh, that would be like 700 pages worth of transactions. So my cash T account wouldn't look like this. It would look like, you know, a T that goes 700 pages down. And so, of course, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any logistic sense. So the cash flow statement takes this, a big long T with way more debits and way more credits than what we've sort of seen in this course. And what it does is it summarizes it. It summarizes the transaction by grouping them together, and it groups them in a very logical manner. The way that these transactions get grouped is into three categories. We have operating transactions, we have investing transactions, and we have financing transactions. So we need to categorize all of our transactions into one of these three categories, and they all, all will categorize into these categories. So uh, starting with the operating transactions, uh, when I think of operating transactions, I think of the day-to-day -day business transactions of the company. And so what are the day-to-day -day business transactions of the company? Well, those are typically the transactions involved in generating profit generating net income. So most revenues and most expenses fall into this category, as well as dealing with our current assets and our current liabilities. So when I pay down my uh, accounts payable, uh, certainly that does not generate net income, right? Debit, accounts payable, credit, cash. Uh, so it doesn't generate net income, but it does affect my cash flow, right? It just doesn't affect my profit at all, paying down a liability or not, but it affects my cash flow. So, so current liabilities are thought of as involving operating transactions. Um, so again, those are typically thought of as the day-to-day -day business transactions of our company. Uh, investing transactions uh, involve long-term assets buying and selling long-term assets. I always think of this as a company choosing to buy a piece of equipment, 
or to sell their old equipment. This is an investing activity. Investments as well, if they're buying and selling other companies, this would be an investing activity. But I, I always think of equipment, like property, patent equipment, as the most common types of investing transactions that we'll see. Uh, so again, I'm looking for purchases and sales of long-term assets. When I want to categorize a cash flow item as investing, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and so if I think about the number of transactions during the year, this is like lots of transactions generate this. This is just a few. Like, you know, if I think a, a company buying and selling long-term assets, it doesn't do it hundreds and thousands of times every day. It does it a few times a year or maybe even dozens of times a year if it's a big company, but it's not happening like constantly and endlessly like our operating items. Financing, when I think about financing, I think about long-term liabilities, borrowing money. I think, well, financing means where do we get our long-term funding from? So either we're borrowing slash repaying the bank or our shareholders are injecting cash or we're repurchasing shares. Share transactions are also financing activities, dividends as well, paying dividends out to our shareholders. So those are sort of, the types of transactions. So any transaction involving uh, paying down of long-term liabilities or borrowing money from the bank, any shareholders equity transaction, like the sh common shareholders, we issue more shares, they give us more cash, that is a financing activity. And again, much like investing, there are few of these relative to operating transactions. That's our bread and butter. That's our day-to-day -day business uh, transactions. So we take our big long T account and we sort of summarize the transactions in a logical manner and we say, okay, here's the cash we started with, here's all of our operating cash in and cash out, here's our investing cash in and cash out, here's our financing cash in and cash out, and here's what we ended with. That is a cash flow statement in a nutshell. Uh, to make your lives more complicated, the operating section we have two options in how we disclose it and how we, we prepare an operating section. There's a direct method and there's a method called the indirect method. So when we talk about the direct method, um, we basically look at where did our operating cash come from and where did it go? So we say cash collected from our customers is where it typically comes from. Cash paid for expenses is typically where it goes, but there are other items involved there. The indirect method says, well, it's largely about net income. Most of those transactions, cash coming from our customers and cash paying expenses generates net income. So why don't we start with net income and work backwards? So we'll start with net income, and, but we know there's things involved in net income that don't involve cash. For example, uh, depreciation, right? Depreciation is an expense. It counts in net income. It doesn't involve cash. So we're going to start with net income, and then we'll work backwards. Um, both of these methods are acceptable under GAAP, uh, under accounting rules. This one is preferred by accounting rules. The direct method is thought to be better by the accounting standard setters. However, businesses prefer, so standard setters prefer the direct method. Businesses have tended to use the indirect method because they're allowed to, even though standard setters have said we prefer direct, uh, you can do either, you can do direct or indirect, and businesses have largely chosen the indirect method. Uh, some people believe it's because they want to hide information. The direct method provides better information. So competitively, you, you don't want to disclose as much. I think it's just because indirect is, is the older method and companies have been doing it for longer and their accounting firms have been doing it for longer and so they just have stuck with it. But uh, there's a lot of possible reasons why uh, the indirect method has remained popular in business. Certainly as an outsider, just kind of looking at this as an academic exercise, I think the direct method is the better of the two. Uh, having said that, in this course, and your prof might be different, in our course, we're going to do both direct and indirect method in every problem we do. Your prof may focus on one over the other, um, and that's their prerogative. So 
There's more I could say now, but I, I think the best way to learn stuff is just by doing examples. So it, we're going to do a lot of examples this chapter of just preparing uh, cash flow statements, and hopefully in preparing them, you begin to better understand and appreciate why they are important. Stay tuned for our next video.